Hello, yeah. Um, in this video, uh, I will show you how to compute and interpret regression diagnostics in multiple linear regression model uh, using R. Okay. So basically, uh, I'll show you how to compute different residuals and impact statistics, uh, and then I will um, generate different plots and then uh, we'll learn how to interpret plots. Okay. So first, uh, let's uh, read in the data set and then fit multiple linear regression model. So this is the model fit. Um, by default, uh, the plot function uh, can generate four residual plots um, uh, from the uh, object uh, from LN function. So we can plot them together here. So immediately you can use uh, these residual plots uh, for uh, checking model assumptions or identifying uh, influential data points. Um, but in this video, uh, we're going to learn how to compute these uh, uh, residual plots. Uh, so here, uh, we need uh, two libraries. Uh, one is the stats, so the other is car. For predicted y value, uh, you simply use the function predict, so predict a model y. Uh, if you want to standardize uh, predict a value, you use R standard. Uh, you need to specify type equal to predict. For unstandardized residuals, uh, we're, we, we call them raw residuals. You simply use residuals of model one. Then you get standardized residuals uh, by using R standard. Now here you don't have to specify type uh, because by default it's the standard residuals. Okay. Uh, and if you want to calculate leverage values, you can use the hat value function. Uh, you can center it by subtracting one over n, you know, just the sample size. And you can center uh, leverage value. Cook's D is very easy to compute. Uh, you can use Cook's dot distance function. Uh, DF betas, you can use the function DF betas of model one. And then the press um, statistics can be computed uh, by using uh, R student function. So here uh, I showed you how to compute all these different kinds of uh, residuals and impact statistics, then you can actually go ahead and generate any plots you want with these uh, statistics. Uh, for example, you can plot uh, all the raw Cox D um, values uh, over index, and then you can get, draw a horizontal line at 4 over n, which is the kind of threshold for identifying outliers. Uh, but here we're, we are going to use uh, the uh, R functions in the libraries uh, to generate uh, diagnostic plots. Uh, first, let me show you how to do the VIF value. It's very easy here. You can use the VIF function, and then you can print out the VIF values. Um, so if the VIF values are close to 1, then there's not much uh, variance inflation. So for this data set, it seems to be the case. So we don't really have any concern about multicollinearity. The next one is uh, to generate different residual plots. Uh, for example, residual versus fitted. So you get this one. Uh, and of course, you can uh, look into, uh, at these residual plots to uh, check a few things. For example, one thing is the whether it's a linear uh, relationship between x and y. If it's a nonlinear, then you should see some curve linear patterns in this residual. Um, and also, uh, you can check if uh, the data distribution, like vertically, the data distribution, the range is about the same uh, for all the fitted values. Uh, that's uh, for checking the assumption of equal variance. Uh, for this data set, it looks like uh, yeah, not, not perfect, but they're almost like equal variance except uh, on the two tails. And that may be because of, uh, they have very few data points on the left and right. And you do see a few um, outlying data points there. 
sorry, and also it's a market for you. Okay. So the second one is the QQ plot. Uh, you can use this plot to check the assumption of a normality. Uh, so from here, you can see the residual plots uh, mostly agree with the straight line. So most of the data points are normally distributed except uh, some on the tails. Okay. Um, and then the scale location plot, uh, similarly you can use it for checking um, equivariances. Um, so here. Uh, and then there's the residual versus the uh, leverage. Okay. So uh, here it says actually the leverage uses the Crookes distance. So you don't want uh, uh, data points uh, too far to the right. So those correspond to data points with large um, Crookes D value, uh, so that potential outliers. And you, you don't want uh, the standardized residuals, is the y-axis. You don't want uh, data points outside the negative 2 and the positive 2, right? So it looks like there's some problematic uh, um, Data points, uh, it's a mark uh, like uh, 0801 and 37. Uh, that's even, um, I think, uh, extreme compared to other data points. Okay. Uh, for Cook's D plot, uh, of course, you can make your own Cook's D plot, but uh, the library card uh, offers an influence index plot. So give you these four plots. The first one is the Cooks D. The second one is, uh, I think, standardized residuals. Uh, the third one is the p-value for testing outliers. And uh, the last one is the hat values. Okay. So uh, for Cooks distance, it's actually marked. Uh, there are two uh, points identified uh, to be potential outliers uh, and also from the standard residuals, there's uh, uh, about two points uh, identified to be potentially problematic. And the p-value, uh, there's a few really small p-values uh, that's uh, like by hypothesis test, uh, they are potential outliers. And then the hat value, these are, remember the Cook's D uh, residual, they are for the overall model, uh, they are related to both x and y. But the hat value is only for x. So you can see there's, uh, uh, there's some uh, data points 3, 3, 4, and uh, 1, 0, 5, 5. These are influential data points. Uh, they're really far away from the average value of the independent variables. So these are also influential data points. So this is a very um, useful graph. Another one is the influence plot. Um, and you can see here it has uh, um, DF, this is called a DF beta plot. And also it has hat values, it has studentized residuals, it has, and the color referring to Cook's D. Okay? So it's a really um, like uh, a lot of uh, information here. So you can look at the numerical values. Uh, these are the one, two, three, four, five, six data points uh, the, this package identified to be potential influential data points. And it's also the studentized the res, uh, residual uh, and the hat value, the Cooks D values are also printed out there. Okay, So there are six data points identified. And the last one, uh, not last one, the, the partial regression plots here And these are the plots for showing, uh, like for each individual independent variable, it shows the relationship between that independent variable and the dependent variable after controlling for all the other independent variables. So for example, if you look at the age, uh, so the with the increase of age, the systolic blood pressure also increases. So it's going up. Uh, for categorical variable like sex, it just give you like box plots um, of the dependent variable in different categories of that independent variable. Okay, so this gives you a, a way to visualize uh, kind of a conditional uh, relationship between 
an individual independent variable and the dependent variable. So we have another called the component component plus residual plot, uh, also called the uh, added value plot, which is similar to the uh, previous uh, partial regression plots. Um, but uh, I, I treat the um, categorical variables a little bit differently, but they convey similar information. Okay, uh, so this is uh, uh, the video I'm showing you how to compute uh, different uh, residuals and uh, influence uh, st uh, impact statistics and how to draw graphs and uh, how to interpret graphs for checking model assumptions and influential data points. Thank you.